In this tutorial we will create the assembly drawing for the nose gear. The first thing to do is to change the page layout of the sheet to set the correct standards to be used. Secondly, we will change the primary scale of the drawing. In the View Layout toolbar, click the Page Layout command. In the dialog box, ensure that the standard is set to ISO TU Delft. In the warning pop-up, click OK. Next change the sheet style to A2 ISO to ensure the correct page size is used and then click OK. Now we will change the primary scale of the drawing. Right click on sheet 1 in the model tree and select properties. Under the sheet tab, change the scale to 1 to 5. Now double check that the properties match. The page should be A2 ISO and the projection method should be third angle. Click OK to set the new properties. In this step we will use the view wizard to create the different views of the part. In the view layout toolbar, click the arrow on the right hand side of the toolbar to extend it and show some extra commands. Click the wizard command. In the wizard dialog box, click the fifth configuration option on the left side. Then click the Next button. We will remove the bottom view as it is not needed. This is done by right-clicking the view and selecting Delete. Click Finish. Switch to the tab containing your nose gear assembly. For the isometric view to have the correct orientation we need to rotate the geometry. Under the View toolbar, change the view to ISO to position the model correctly. Now select the YZ plane of the nose gear fork in the model tree as the plane to be used for the front view. Check that the orientation of each view is correct. By using the view orientation manipulator, we can rotate the views if they are not oriented correctly. To generate the views, click in an empty space on the page. In the next step we will position the views correctly. In this step we will reposition and edit the views so that they are correctly displayed. First, we will add the axis and center lines to the views. Multi-select the left, front, right and top views by holding the control key and selecting the outer frames of each view. Right-click on one of the selected frames and select the Properties option. In the Generation tab, under Dress Up, click the check marks for the center line and axis options. Click OK to update the views with the center lines. We will now change the visual properties of the isometric view. Right-click the isometric view and select Properties. In the Generation tab, change the view generation mode to Raster. Next click on Options. Set the mode to Shading and click the With Texture check mark. In the level of detail for visual, use the High Quality option. Click Close and then click OK in the Properties window. The isometric view will now be colored in. Finally, we will position all the views so they fit on the page. Remember that we can position the isometric view independently in the top right corner of the page. In this step we will create an offset section view with the cutting plane through the center of the right view to get a cross-sectional cut of the nose gear. Start with activating the right view by double-clicking its frame. In the View Layout toolbar, click the Offset Section View command. Draw a line down the center of the right view starting from the top. When creating the second point, double-click to indicate to Katia that it is the last point of the cutting profile. Position the view to the right and click in an empty space to create the section. Because our axle has a thread on the end, we will want to display it in the view. Right-click the section view and select Properties. In the Generation tab, under Dress Up click the check mark for the thread. Make sure that Axis and Center Line options are still checked as well. Click OK to update the view. 
In this step we will add a detail view in order to show a magnified view of the axle. Start with activating the section view by double-clicking its frame. In the View Layout toolbar, select the Detail View Profile command found underneath the Detail View, since we want to use a rectangular profile and not the default circular profile. Draw a rectangle around the axle in the section view. Position the view above the section and then click in the empty space to generate the view. Right-click the Detail view and select Properties. In the View tab, change the scale to 1 to 1. Click OK to update the properties. Reposition the view after the update if necessary. In this step we will adjust the hatching patterns in the views to make the view easier to understand, as currently the patterns do not fit well within the parts. First, we will delete the hatching patterns for the roller elements of the bearing, as per conventions they should not be sectioned when cut longitudinally. Multi-select the patterns and then right-click on a selected pattern and click the Delete option. This is the same for the axle shaft and pin, but they have already been done for you. Now we will adjust the remaining patterns. Double-click a hatching pattern to edit its properties. Change the angle, pitch and offset to values that best fit the geometry. Click Apply to see the effect of changing the settings. Click OK when you are finished. The very thick lines represent sections where no hatching fits inside the geometry. If you do not see the thick lines, check that your elements analysis in the view toolbar is turned on. To adjust the hatching pattern of the region with thick lines, hover over the lines and then press one of the arrow keys on your keyboard, this will show all the items that can be selected. Right-click on the object that highlights the thick line and choose Properties. Adjust the patterns for all the parts, remember that no two hatchings should be the same and that the angles should be chosen in such a way that the hatching can be distinguished the best from the geometry lines. In this step we will add an exploded isometric view, using the slide we made in the last tutorial. In the View Layout toolbar, select the isometric command found underneath the Front View command. Now switch to the tab containing your nose gear assembly. In the View toolbar set the view to ISO to position the model correctly. Click on the exploded view slide in the model tree to activate it for the view. Now, click on any part in the geometry window. Click in an empty space to generate the view and then position it to the right of the section view. In this step we will add the frame and title block to show the information of the assembly. In the View Layout toolbar, click the Page Layout command to open the layout window. Under Dress Up Options, select Drawing Title Block TU Delft in the drop down menu as the template to use for the title block. Under Frame and Title Block, click the Create option. Now press Apply to generate the lines and text for the frame. In the pop up box, type your name into the text field, then click OK. Click OK to exit the page layout. In this step we will remove the center lines for the holes in the rim and replace them with a pitch circle. This shows that the holes are the same distance from the center. Then we will also adjust the other symmetry center lines. First, delete the center lines for the holes in the right view. In the annotation toolbar, click the center line with reference command found underneath the center line command. Now select one of the holes in the rim, then select any one of the larger circles of the rim as the reference. Create new center lines for all the holes in the right view. Remember to double-click the command to keep it active and to be able to do all the holes successively. For any of the holes, if you get a warning message, just click the OK button. 
Adjust the center lines so they are not overlapping each other and that there is one complete pitch circle for all the holes. The easiest way is to reduce all but one of the circular center lines and then use it to create a full circle. Repeat the procedure for the holes in the left view. Now to make the view more consistent, we will extend the center lines along the symmetry planes of the assembly in all the views where it is necessary. In the top view, delete the extra axis lines that were created and then adjust its center lines. In this step we will add dimensions to the drawing. From the common conventions we learned that assembly drawings should only include overall dimensions and some functional and fitting dimensions where necessary. In the annotation toolbar, select the dimensions command. Add the dimensions shown in the example drawing. When a dimension is not projected from the correct location, right-click when creating the dimension and change the extension line's anchor to a different anchor point. Remember to reposition the view titles so that they do not intersect with any of the dimensions. Open the Object Properties command found in the Tools toolbar. Multi-select the dimensions and then adjust the precision of the dimensions to 1. In this step we will add a bill of material to describe what parts are used in the assembly. Then we will adjust some of the properties displayed in the table. In the annotation toolbar, click the bill of material command found underneath the table command. In the pop-up, make sure the style is default and then click OK. Click in an empty space on the page to generate the bill of material. As you can see the weight is not displayed correctly, as the property displayed is not the computed weight so we will adjust it. Right-click the bill of material and select properties. In the reported properties tab, select the estimated weight row. In the property drop-down menu search for computed weight. Now adjust the column widths so that the bill of material fits onto the page next to the title block. In this step we will add balloons to the exploded view as reference between each part and the bill of materials. Activate the exploded isometric view by double-clicking its frame. In the annotation toolbar, click the arrow on the right-hand side to extend the toolbars. Click the automatic balloons generation command. In the dialog box, your bill of material should be automatically selected and the item number will be the column used. Change the number of balloons to 1 for each instance. Then click OK to generate the balloons. 
Rearrange the balloons by clicking and dragging them to a suitable position. Or use the element positioning command to align the balloons with the different options so that they are neatly arranged around the view. Ensure to have minimal intersections between the balloons and the geometry and make it as clear as possible. Do not worry if the numbers displayed are different from the example drawing. What matters is that the part referenced by the balloon is the same as your bill of material. Remember to reposition the view title so that it does not intersect with any of the balloons.